What's up guys, my name is Devin Wynn and welcome to 11% Tutorials. Today I'll be teaching you guys how to recreate this liquid rotoscope glitch effect. It's a really cool effect going around common in music videos and there's something you can just really have fun with and be creative with and you can just create it in your own style. Uh, it's a really simple effect, we'll be using Premiere Pro and After Effects today. But before we get started, please make sure you like the video and subscribe down below. All this video content is free so it would really mean a lot if you guys could. But without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into the tutorial. All right, so now that we're in After Effects, we're gonna go ahead and make a new project. We're gonna go and make a new composition. We're gonna call this Liquid uh, Roto Test. So I just dragged in our footage. This is some uh, old test footage just never used. So make sure your video clip is trimmed down to about 10 seconds max. You don't wanna have too long a video clip. It'll just mess up After Effects. So that's what we're gonna do over here. So now that our clip is fully trimmed down and it's about 10 seconds-ish max length, what we're first gonna to wanna to do is we're going to split the clip about like two, three seconds in. So Command Shift D to split the clip and that is going to create one bottom layer and then top layer. But these are two different separate clips. So if you turn this bottom layer off and let's see that and then you know, vice versa. So over here, we have our subject split now. What we're going to do is we're gonna go over here to the top layer, make sure you clicked on the top layer and you're going to double click. We double click this now. So what that basically did is it opened up a new layer from the composition. You have the composition layer. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our Roto Brush tool, make sure you are at the beginning of your second clip and we're going to just rotoscope out our subject over here. So if you're familiar with rotoscoping, you can go ahead and skip to the mark time. If not, it's very simple. You could just take this green, uh, this marker, <clears throat> you just highlight everything that is uh, you want to select in green. And then if there is anything that comes up that you don't want to select, let's wait for something to come up. You can use option, hold down option or alt on your, if you're on PC, and then you can deselect it and then it'll deselect the spot. But we are going to rotoscope this real quick. I'll speed this clip up. Once you're done rotoscoping your subject, uh, it's very important that you want to freeze this. So this makes sure that you just won't lose any data whatsoever happens, and then you just lost all your rotoscoping work. So we'll go ahead and speed this up as well. Now that our rotoscope is frozen, you'll get this purple tab and you'll know that it's frozen. And if you zoom in, you won't be able to rotoscope anymore because everything is already frozen. So what we're gonna do is we're, we're going to go to our composition tab now. And so now you can see our rotoscope layer is um, separate from our layer. And what we're gonna do to get rid of this white lining, we're just gonna come over here to shift edge and we're just going to decrease that all the way down until you see no excess white lining around your subject. And then we should be good. So now our subject is completely separate. My bad, I forgot to do this in the beginning but uh, it's really easy just to go from here we have to make a duplicate of this layer so we're just gonna do command D <clears throat> and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to this bottom layer and then we're just gonna delete this word of brush over here so perfect so now if you turn off this bottom layer you will see that our subject is separate from our footage now and now we can just go ahead and edit it so what we're first going to do is we are going to take the turbulence displace effect. So you can type in turbulence displace and it should just come up right away. And we're going to apply this to our bottom layer. So we apply this and you can already see everything's kind of get a little bit like off and blobby, I guess you could call it. And what we're going to do is we're going to come over here and we're just going to change this amount. And this is, like I said, it's a really fun effect. You can just play with it. It doesn't have to be exact settings to what I'm doing. I'm going to set a keyframe for amounts and size at the very beginning of the clip and then I'm gonna go all the way to the end and then I'm just gonna increase it a little bit and then size will just make that a little bit uh, bigger as well. And like I said, it, it really doesn't matter. You can do it any way you want. You could decrease the size at the end or increase the size at the beginning whatsoever. Uh, it's just, it, it all comes together and it's just a very, fun effect that you can just play with. So as you can see, our clip is starting to look pretty weird now, but the rotoscope is keeping our main subject in frame uh, and just all together while the rest of the scene is getting tripped up. So in the beginning, it starts off like that and then everything starts to go crazy. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna go back to our effects and presets. We are going to type in displacement map. And now what you'll see is uh, you're gonna grab this displacement map effect and you're gonna drag this down to the second layer as well. 
So basically what this is gonna do, and you'll see how it works out, is it's kind of it kind of makes everything like watery or liquidy, I guess you could call it. And we're just gonna go ahead and play with this effect. So I like to keyframe it at the beginning, at just a very like high value. Just like that. And then we're gonna keyframe the max horizontal and then the max vertical. And then towards the end, I'm just gonna change that. So whatever I had it in, I'm just gonna opposite, reverse the, uh, the movement of the max horizontal, and then same with this. And you can just add like a negative sign in front of yours if you want as well. And so now as you can see, if we play it back, everything is starting to like become all liquidy and like just moving around, it looks really trippy at first. So what we're next gonna do is we're gonna grab a glow effect from our presets, effect and presets again, and we're gonna drag this onto our second layer again. So now you can see everything is starting to look very saturated and just bright and it's kind of harsh to the eye. So what we're gonna first gonna do is we're gonna come over here to this effects controls panel. We're gonna take our radius and we're gonna increase that so that everything is not such a harsh line against the uh, footage, but just the more like gradual glow. And it just makes everything look a little bit more like dreamy and, uh, and cooler, I guess you could say. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna, all these other effects, you don't really have to worry about them. Just all that matters is the intensity and then the radius. And you can mess with the threshold. Threshold just controls how much of the scene is glowing and how much is not, but I like it the way it was. So my settings, if you wanna copy them, are 60, 156, for glow radius and then 1.4 for glow intensity. So what we're gonna do last to this uh, bottom layer is, I know there's a lot of effects going on here, but once we have everything down, it's gonna look really cool, is we're gonna take our hue saturation effect from our effects presets and we're gonna drag it to our second layer again. And what you can see now is there's this color range channel. And if you're editing it through the timeline, you can just hit this drop down menu. We're gonna hit the keyframe effect at the starting at the very beginning of our, of our timeline, my dad. And we're going to keyframe that. So they, it just created a new keyframe and that's the hue at the very beginning. And then we're gonna drive all the way to the end. And then you can do it either, uh, two ways. You can just increase the value up here or you can drag this, this knob. I like to drag, drag the knob and then um, you can see everything is like really becoming crazy now. So I'll just do it like one one quarter rotation. And then now you can see everything is starting to look really crazy now. By the way, if you don't like how the rest of the scene turns black and you can see the bottom layer you know, when you apply the displacement map, what you can easily do is you can just duplicate this layer, hit Command D, and then go to the one below it and then just delete all the effects. So then everything is just kind of still still there in scene. The effects is gonna be applied, but then the rest of the, the scene is still behind uh, the footage. So just make sure that there's no pinning. What we're next gonna do is we are going to grab a glow effect again, and we are going to add this now to our rotoscope layer. So this is just to make sure that the rotoscope pops in at the very beginning of the clip. So I'm gonna take this glow effect and now to our rotoscope layer, which is the top, and we're gonna drag this right there. And then we are going to, you can see our, our subjects are starting to glow now. Now this is where you can use threshold because as you can see, uh, only like the fingertips of my subject is glowing. So I'm gonna increase this threshold so that everything's like, he's all glowing now. And it kind of becomes harsh like that with the, the glow, but we're gonna increase the radius so it becomes like very uh, gradient. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to keyframe the glow intensity at the very beginning and then move a couple frames inward and then decrease that all the way to zero. So what this basically does is that it kind of creates this like, this like pop, it pops in and then like he's, uh, he's like in the scene now. So it just adds like, you know, another level of effects to it. What we're going to do to the, to the top rotoscope layer again is we're going to go to the transform tab on the timeline. And then what we're going to do is we're going to scale it up at the very first keyframe. So I'm going to take this scale and just scale it just a little bit a little bit up like that. And you don't even have to worry about the anchor point because it's gonna be so fast. And then we're just gonna drop this right back down to 100, move a couple frames forward and you just add that. So then it kind of like pops in. I'm going to select these, hit keyframe assistant, right click keyframe assistant. And then we're going to turn these keyframes into easy in. So then that just makes it so that the movement is a little bit more smooth with the, um, the 
pop in. So now you can see the scene is all normal and then he pops in and just like adds, you know, just, just pops, the, pops the effect. Lastly, what we're gonna do is, now this is what I said, this is just a preference thing. This effect is really fun. Uh, I try to aim for all the effects on this channel are just really fun effects and you can just play with them. So I encourage you to be creative with it. But something I do like to add is a CRT or like VHS effect in between the rotoscope layer and the background layer. So I have this CRT footage downloaded, it's just a basic overlay file. I'll link a YouTube video down below where you can download a similar footage. We are gonna take this and we're gonna drag this into our project. And then we're gonna drop this right in between the rotoscope layer and the background. So now you can see there's this black box behind it. Shift and hold, hold shift to scale it up and then this whole CRT effect is covering the footage now. So now it's in top, on top of the, um, the front layer so we can just drag this basically over to where we want the video to start. And then you can see our subject is in front but everything is still black so what you can do is come over here to the blend mode and then select add and then what we can also do is add a glow to your overlay i just like to do this it's just preference thing hey it's just a fun creative effect so just have fun with it mess around you know just see whatever works best and i'm just going to add some glow to our crt effect so uh if you can't tell what i'm doing just because everything's going on over here i'm just adding some glow to the crt effect so it just you know pops more and just makes everything look a lot more colorful and then Voila. So now we have our footage and everything is like really crazy. So now that we have all our effects done, uh, one thing that I like to add to just tops it off is a shake effect between the regular clip and the effect with all the clips. So it's just a quick transition that just, you know, ties everything in all together. So what I'm gonna do for you guys is I'm going to link down below in the description five free shape transitions uh, that you can use with Premiere Pro. So we're gonna be exporting this clip and then moving to Premiere Pro to finish it off. I'm gonna link these all for free. I'm not asking for emails or phone numbers, I'm just giving it for free for you guys so that you guys can create cool content and cool videos. All I ask is that you just like the video and subscribe down below. But without further ado, let's export this and then move to Premiere Pro. So now that we have everything exported and we are in Premiere Pro, I'm going to open up the bins for all my transitions. So these are all the transitions I have. The five that I'll link down below are, are these few. These are the shape transitions. So they're just really cool you know, shape transitions that you can add to these. I'm going to take a shake up to down footage and then I'm just going to drag this onto our timeline and make sure the timeline is the split is right where the uh, footage starts. So unfortunately our footage is too short actually, but you get the idea. And so I'm just gonna move this around a bit until it perfectly lines up. So as you can see, the footage shakes and then it turns into all these effects. So I'll just add the beginning of this uh, clip when I export it. Here is the final clip. Thanks guys so much for watching all the way to the end. I hope at the end of this, you guys can walk away with an effect that you can use in your future music videos or projects and such. Make sure you download the shape packs that I've linked down below for the best effect of the video. And if you guys have any suggestions or ideas on tutorial ideas, make sure to leave a comment down below on any videos you'd like to see in the future. Remember to subscribe to 11% for more tutorials and music videos, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.